Alrighty guys, so today I'm gonna show you how to kill deer cops for beginners. I'm gonna show you a couple methods. Uh, let's get into it. So my stats are reset here. So what I would recommend is that you build a pierogi. So what you gotta do is you gotta put in an egg, a monster meat, and then two carrots or two cactus is going to get you a pierogi, which heals you 40 HP. Now you can get the egg by having a bird in a cage, and then you cook a monster meat and give it to it, and it'll give you an egg. And that'll get you that. So I'm gonna cook both these up. Now, in the meantime, you're going to want an alchemy engine, and I'm just in creative mode right now for demonstrative purposes, but what you want is you want a football helmet, a couple of these. So they just cost a pigskin and a rope, so three grass and a pigskin, so they're pretty easy to get. You just hammer down a couple pig houses for pigskin because you're just, you need it. So let's say we'll build four of these just so that we ha make sure that we have enough. And then I'll also give myself one more pierogi. And I'll show you guys how you do this one. That's misspelled in here. Okay, so what you wanna do is you want a campfire, and then you also want something to put in the campfire so that you can warm it up a bit. And you can already see I have an orange thermal stone. So what I do is I'm gonna go, let's say deer cop spawn right here. As he will, he'll spawn in the middle of the night every time. Now there he is. He's on me, he's aggroed on me, so I'm building a campfire here. And we want him to come this way, and we want to get him right next to the campfire, and we just want to fight him. You just want to hold your attack key, which is control and F. And as you do this, you're gonna see your health is going down pretty quick. So my health is already down to 105 now, but I'm doing a lot of damage to him too. And I am playing Wilson, so I have a normal damage modifier. You want to be careful if you're playing as like Wes or something. I'm getting pretty low here. After I get a little bit lower, I'm going to eat a bit. Now I got to eat really quick. I'm going to eat all these. Get my health back up to full. And he should die here pretty quickly. Now, the reason why I have the campfire is you'll see as he hits me that I was getting a little bit blue there. And if I'm not next to the campfire, he's actually going to freeze me every second hit, which will make him get a free hit on me for the third hit, which is not a good time. So you definitely want to have the campfire, and you just want to sit next to that, and you want to hold control and F. And you can see I'm actually perfectly fine right now. So if I had one pierogi there and my full hand bat and two helmets, I was going to be perfectly fine, but I would always recommend you over prepare for these type of things and it's never too late to have more than enough gear. Now, one of those things you need to keep in mind is you want to keep deer clops away from your base because the structures can aggro him off of you. He, uh, he'll go and attack structures. Another thing to keep in mind with that is though, if you do have him aggroed on you, him attacking will not break structures. He'll only break them if he runs over them. So you really wanna keep his aggro on you just at all times. And you just need to fight him immediately. Just go bam, 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 really fast. Now in that situation, the reason why I want extra gear is, you could see at the end there, I'm insane now. So, and now I'm getting a terror beak. So if that terror beak had spawned during the fight, I would have been okay still. I could have just kept holding control and F. I would have killed the terror beak and the deer clops. I would have been perfectly fine. There would have been no issues for me. And generally, you're not gonna have like six of these spawn like right in a row. You might get two at most, I would say. But if both those come and attack you during that deer cops fight, and you have your four helmets and your three pierogi, you're gonna be perfectly fine. You're gonna have no issues. You're gonna be okay. So right now, all I have is a orange thermal stone. It's just barely orange, a torch, and a fresh hand bat. And now I'm going to spawn in a deer clops, and I'm gonna fight it for you guys so you can see how you do it if you're on really low gear. Okay, we'll get in there. Now what I want to do is I want to hit him a couple times and drag him right back to the path. Now it is good to stay next to your fire if you do have one, but normally you're going to have a base. It's good to note with Deer Clops that while fighting him, he will not break your buildings. We're gonna let him attack these Pengles here. Thanks for that, Pengles. And they're dead, all of them. What you doing, Deer Clops? Oh shoot, he's going after my building there. We don't want that, so we're gonna hit him a couple times here. Now, what you can do is you can hit him three times and then run. You can see here that his freezing animation is actually smaller than the actual distance he's going to attack. 
Now, I'm gonna stop this for just a second and show you his actual attack range. There's the circle. That's his actual attack range, and it'll attack all around him. So that's where his actual attack radius is, and he does have AOE attack, so area effect attack, and he will hit multiple mobs at once. If they are within range, he'll just hit everything that's within range of him. So you wanna stay outside of the circle and just make sure you don't get hit. The ice is not indicative of how far his range is. You can see here that my real issue is that I'm gonna be getting cold here soon. That's all right though. We're doing some damage, doing some damage. You know the deal. We just gotta keep doing this for a bit. Each hit is doing 50 damage. And we're getting some distance here. And now you'll also see my Sandy is gone. It's just gone. So normally you're going to become insane if you let the fight take too long. So you really want to engage him as quickly as possible. Now I should say that while I'm doing this, I would not recommend that any of you do this with no armor. You definitely want to have some armor. I would recommend a football helmet if you have access to it. If you don't, while well, you hear deer cops coming, you should build a log suit, a grass suit, any type of armor that you can get your hands on. You really, really need armor. And that's it, that's the entire fight. Not very hard boss, you can see I didn't even get hit once there. He's pretty easy, and then this gives me the deer cops eyeball, so I'm not completely screwed. Uh, very easy boss if you know what you're doing, but you need to engage him immediately and you need to have a strong enough weapon. So the hand bat is a very good weapon and it's very cheap, costs a couple pigskin, it costs a pigskin, a couple big meat, and a couple twigs. So not very hard to make and all you need is an alchemy engine. Definitely a good item to go with for fighting deer clops. Uh, definitely a good weapon. You could also use a dark sword if you have access to a dark sword. You could use Basically any weapon that does a lot of damage, I would re not recommend that you use a spear because a spear does basically no damage. It's like, it's like half as good as the hand bat, so I would not recommend it. Now let's talk about some more information you need to know. So in Don't Strive Together, Deer Clops has 4,000 HP. So quite a bit of HP, although you saw there how quickly he died with a hand bat. Hand bat does a lot of damage, so you definitely want to use a hand bat for that and just get your DPS in and take care of him. You can also see here that he does 75 to players and 150 damage to mobs. That's why it's really not a very good method to drag him into mobs, especially with his AoE attack. He'll kill mobs that generally would be very hard for you very easily and just wreck them. So if you lure him into beefalo, things like that, he will just absolutely destroy him. The only mobs I can really think of that do very well against him are tree guards and tentacles. So if you have access to either of those, you can use those and just lower his health a little bit. Now you can also see here, his attack period is pretty long. That's why I was able to get three hits him in between. During that fight, you saw there with the kiting that I went on the path so I could have some more speed, but you are able to get three hits in pretty easily without a path, so it's possible about it, but I would recommend that if you have access to a path that you can see. I know in winter that can be pretty hard because just the snow coming down, it can be pretty hard to see, but if you have access to one, go ahead and use it. His attack range is pretty far for most mobs, but it's not as far as his ice shows, his attack range of eight here, and his walking speed is pretty slow, but you do need to keep him aggroed, so just keep that in mind. His Sandiara is pretty dang high, so minus 400 a minute if you're in combat, and minus 100 a minute outside of combat, so you really just wanna kill him immediately so you're not just having your Sandy get drained beforehand so you don't have shadow creatures attack you, especially if you're one of these people who already has their Sandy at maximum at the start. I would normally have my Insanity just already at zero beforehand and just have really good gear and just tank him and kill him you know, in 15 seconds as Wolfgang, because Wolfgang's my favorite character and just destroys bosses. And now, Really keep in mind here that he can freeze enemies, so he will just get free hits in. If he hits more than two hits, he'll get a free hit in for the third one, and that is for you too, so don't get hit twice in a row really quickly, or else he'll get frozen, he'll get a third hit, you'll be done for. AoE attack, so he attacks behind him as well as in front of him, and he can attack multiple things at once, and he destroys structures and trees. Now, in Don't Strive Together, there's actually some more complicated things. So he will always spawn on day 30's night, which is very good to know if you know it's coming up, you can prepare for it. You can go day 28, make your armor, your weapon, your healing food, and be ready for him beforehand, which is very nice compared to the way he works in regular Don't Starve, where there's only a 25% chance for him to spawn, and it's just completely random what day it happens. Very obnoxious. 
And with this, why would you even want to kill this boss? So a lot of new players will just drag him away and then wait for him to despawn. Why, why wouldn't you just do that? Well, first off, eight big meat. Eight big meat's pretty good. I mean, that's a lot of food. And then second off, the even more important part is the deer clops eyeball. So this is the only way to get the deer clops eyeball other than killing Claws, who is a raid boss. And even then, that's only a small chance. And what the deer clops eyeball lets you do is you can use it to build an umbrella, which gives you 100% resistance to rain, which in spring, Rain is really, really bad, and it'll mess you up. It'll make you drop your weapons. It'll make you freeze to death. It'll make you insane really fast. And if you're a beginner, I know a lot of beginner players don't want to play insane all the time like I do. So you really got to watch out for not being able to, you know, have this really OP umbrella that you wear on your head, and that's really strong. All your other options are way, way worse. So this is the best umbrella in the game, best way to keep the rain off you. And it also works in the summer to help keep you cool if you decide to go on the surface instead of go in the caves like I would recommend. And then you can also, later in the game, you can build a Houndius Shootius. This is a very late game item. So you can see here, you have to have Thule Sight and you have to go to an ancient pseudoscience station, which are both runes items, which is the end game area in the caves. Uh, this will let you build a Houndia Shootius, which is actually a mob structure. It will heal itself, and it will shoot enemies that you attack nearby it, so it'll help you kill them. It is extremely strong and very good for building farms, mob farms, such as building a Varg farm where you farm the hounds off it. It is an incredibly good item, but pretty hard to get. I would always recommend you build the Ibrella first, so that you, way you can get through spring very easily. And then once you kill your second, your third year collapse, you can go ahead and build a couple of these. And that is all for the video today, guys. If you liked the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. Bye-bye, guys.